All right, everybody, welcome back to Real Talk on the Cowboy Slot channel. This is episode number 10, and a very happy Easter to all of you out there. Thank you so much for spending your Sunday with us. We've got Mark here from Gamble Smart, who's joining us today as our co-host. Thank you so much, Mark, for being here. Really appreciate having you here. Mark's been coming out with a lot of really good uh, daily tips and shorts, uh, so be sure to check out the Gamble Smart channel if you have not yet uh, checked that out. And uh, before we get started with today's show, just want to touch on a couple quick things here, and then we will dive into your questions. If it's your first time here, this is an open Q&A. You guys can ask any question you'd like. We do try to get to as many of the questions as we possibly can, but if we happen to miss any, then um, we do have our website available, which is ropethejackpot.com, where you can ask your questions 24-7. So uh, once again, a very happy Easter to everyone. Thank you so much for being in here. Uh, first thing that we want to touch on is this. Um, this has been especially prevalent on Facebook and TikTok, especially it's getting really, really bad out there. Um, you know, there's people out there that are, you know, taking our content, not just me, but other creators as well, taking other creators content. But what they're doing is they're attaching links to these social casinos out there to use. Um, I can't tell you how many messages I get every single day from people that's like, you know, I signed up for super happy, lucky, good time crypto casino with your code. Guys, that is not us. <laughs> that is not <laughs> right. us at all. Um, we do not endorse any kind of online casino, uh, any kind of social casino, anything like that. If you see pages out there that are you know, taking our content, there's really not much we can do about it other than you guys reporting it. Um, so just stay alert and also just, uh, again, PSA, we, we do not give away prizes or anything like that. Um, if we do something, if we ever do a giveaway where it's going to be here on these live streams. So, uh, we're not going to reach out to you in comments or ask you to message us on, you know, telegram or anything like that. So just always remember, stay alert to stuff like that. And if you ever do have a concern about following one of our pages, you can actually go to our website, which is ropethejackpot.com forward slash social. And it will have all of the links on there to all of our legitimate pages. So just so you guys are aware on that. So just stay alert. Also, as of today, uh, we are now on uh, on Cameo. Um, if you guys are not familiar with Cameo, it's where you guys can actually um, order a custom video. Maybe you've got a friend that's having a birthday and they really like cowboy slots. You can now order a video on Cameo. So be sure to check that out. We do have that link uh, on our website as well. New member benefit is coming out. It's actually uh, today was the first one. So for our, this is a benefit for our YouTube members. So if you're not a member of the YouTube channel, you can always check that out. It is optional. Uh, all of the education stuff is still all always available to the public. So we don't put anything behind a paywall. Members do just get an extra live stream on Mondays, which will be tomorrow. And also starting today, we've got some added benefits to the YouTube member program that's coming up, which is some behind the scenes fun stuff. So. Be sure to check that out. And finally, before we move on, just want to give a special thank you and shout out to our sponsor today, which is Slot Machines Unlimited. Slot Machines Unlimited is the nation's largest and most trusted dealer of home slot machines. So if you are like Mark and myself and you've thought about getting slot machines for your home, this is the perfect place to do it. They've got a selection of thousands of different machines. And not only that, but you can save some money by mentioning Cowboy Slots. And we do have all of their information on our website as well which is ropethejackpot.com. All right. So let's dive into some questions here because we, yeah, we, <laughs> we got a lot of for you. We got a bunch of questions here. A lot of good questions tonight. Uh, yeah. Lisa starting it off with a $50 super chat. Lisa, thank you very much. Really do appreciate that. Uh, Lisa says, so my question is, I was playing penny slots, $2.25 a spin, and I hit free spins for a total of $7.51. Uh, after re-triggers, would have gotten the same bonus on a lower or higher bet ended with uh 1960 hand pay that's awesome congratulations lisa and thank you very much for that super chat um would you have gotten it at a same at a higher or lower bet really depends on the game um but most likely i mean if you hit the button at the exact same millisecond yes you would have gotten the same bonus so uh but it really does depend on the game let us know in the comments what game you were you were playing when you hit that but thank you very much for your super chat we really do appreciate it and also a uh, blue ringed octopus dollar ninety nine super sticker. Thank you very much for that. Really do appreciate you as well. All right, 
So we got a ton of questions queued up here. Mark, you want to yeah, go ahead and take one? Here. Yeah, good stuff. Um, you want me to take a couple? And we'll just yeah. Go. All right, cool. Um, Danny Ocean says, my casino offers self-pay for jackpots. What's your thoughts on that? Uh, well, this is a personal decision, but well, I'll tell you my thoughts and Brantley might have different, but uh, I personally do not like it um, because I like whenever I hit a hand pay, I like sitting there and waiting because it's the time that it's a cool off period, right? Um, if you self pay, it's more likely you're just going to keep, keep playing and keep playing. And yeah. And it doesn't stop you from just going to the machine next to you and starting to play that while you wait on your hand pay. Yeah. But whenever I get a hand pay, I sit there and I don't do anything until I get the hand pay. Um, and I do that on purpose because I think it's a good time to kind of calm, come down off of the high of getting that hand pay. So what are your thoughts, Brantley? You know, I, I think it's a, it's both a positive and a negative. Um, you know, because when you get paid a hand pay, you've got cash in hand. You can, you can feel it, you can touch it, you can see it. You can also separate it out and put it into a lockbox or put it away. Um, but when you add it back into the machine, you're a lot more tempted to replay it. So, uh, you know, it's got its pros and its cons. I, I guess it's a good thing. Like if you're a very, very high limit player, if you're playing hundreds of dollars a spin, um, and you hit, you know, like a baby hand pay, like 1200 or something like that, then yeah, it would be a positive thing. But I think for most people, uh, I'm, I'm on the same page with Mark. Uh, I don't really think it's a positive, but very good question. Very good. I don't think we've had that question in a while. So that's a, that's no, a good yeah. One. Let's kind of come back. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Adam says, happy Easter, everyone. Uh, you as well. Um, been following your channel for the past year and just wanted to say how your invaluable information has made me a much smarter gambler. Keep up the good work. Well, uh, definitely. You're welcome, Adam. Thank you. Uh, that's something Brantley and I try really hard, <laughs> really hard sometimes uh, to get uh, the message across, but glad you're doing well. And if people would just listen and open their minds, they might find out that there can be a better gambler than they are now, right? Absolutely. So, good Good to see that. And uh, I'll take one more. Yeah, go ahead. I'll hand it off to you, Brantley. So Brent Baker, how, hey, good to see you, Brent. Uh, howdy all from Kansas City. Happy Easter. Is there an RNG for every reel on a slot machine? Curious about Zeus 1000 with the five main and six colossal reels. So uh, there's one RNG, but there is one RNG pick per reel whenever you hit the spin button. So um, if you do hit the spin button, if there's five reels, six reels, eight reels, whatever it is, um, that's going to be pick one number for each of those reels. And then that's what's going to determine. And so once it plays out, then it evaluates whether it's a win or not. So that is what is going on there. All right. Back to you, Brantley. Very good question, Brent. Uh, Scott here has a question. Since volatility doesn't matter on HHR machines, does it matter which game you play? This is actually a really good one. So HHR is kind of a different ball game. Um, obviously, it's not you versus the machine. It's you versus other people. The problem is there can be multiple prize pools at once. So even on, say, for example, the new version of Pinball, that's Pinball HHR, um, both of those progressives, they're in different prize pools. So you've got a prize pool for the three red double sevens, and then you've got a prize pool for the chamber bonus. Um, so it can matter in that sense, but really it's one of those that it's very difficult to gauge. Um, I would look around at all of the different progressives and see, but again, you know, the bigger the progressive is, obviously it's going to be harder to obtain. Uh, HHR is really one of those where just watching your money is the biggest thing um, with HHR as opposed to looking for something on the machine. Because again, since you're not playing the machine, it can be very, very difficult. Um, very good question on that. Uh, and here's a follow up question also about HHR from uh, Min K. How do you know if you're playing HHR, bingo, or a regular slot? I've seen channels uh, fast tap a game. Uh, that isn't paying out, they say it will change the algorithm of the RNG. Is that a real thing? So I'll break break this down into, well, you got two questions here. The first one, um, HHR will never be in an actual casino. The reason being is because HHR, the house does not make a profit. So with HHR games, it works in the same fashion as kind of like the lottery system where the building, the OTB that actually has the HHR devices, they only get paid a kickback from the state when somebody wins. They do not retain a profit of coin in from those machines. So if it is inside of a casino, it is not HHR. 
Uh, that's the first one. Bingo will normally have a bingo card somewhere on the screen or somewhere on the device itself. If you can't find one, you can look at the game rules and see if you see bingo patterns on there. Anything else, it's going to be a regular slot. Or if you're in Washington State, it gets a little tricky. Double check the game rules because you'll see some words down there that says it's based on a lottery poll. Um, other than that, those are the really easy, easiest, quickest ways is just look in the game rules. The second part of your question, uh, fast tapping, you know, to change up your algorithm. It doesn't change the algorithm of the RNG at all. Um, you know, people say it changes up timing and all of that. And it's like, you, you don't know how fast those computers are actually moving guys. <laughs> it's, it's not really like, yeah, are you stopping it at a different time? Yes, you are. But I mean, look at the scope of what you're trying time. to get. Yeah. You yeah, know, exactly. I kind of, I kind of liken this to, um, you know, I thought of this example, it, it would be like if you're running down a runway and saying, I'm going to try to beat the airplane, I can guarantee you with hundred percent certainty, you ain't going to outrun the airplane. But in this, it's like you trying to outrun like the space station or a space shuttle. I, I can guarantee you're not going to go faster than it is. So even if you've got the fastest fingers in the world, you're really not changing up much there's still a, quite a bit of a gap in between you and that result. So very good question. All right. I'll take one more and then I'll pass it on to you, Mark. Uh, Nick okay. says, uh, Hey Brantley, can you talk about slot machines and bars or taverns? So it really depends on the state. We have them here in Wyoming. They're not slot machines though. They're skill-based games, which is a completely different ballpark. A lot of States out there. Pennsylvania has this as well. Uh, they look kind of like slots, but they do not work the same way as slot machines. It's more of like a puzzle game. Um, you can win some money off of it, but again, if it's in a bar or a tavern, don't go crazy and spend all your money on it. It's it's not really worth it. Obviously, if you're in a place like Nevada, they're going to have regular slot machines because they can have regular slot machines anywhere. But anywhere outside of that, every state's going to be very different. So I know like Wyoming, uh, Pennsylvania. I know there's a couple of them out there. They have skill-based games. So that's what those are. Um, and really quick, we do have, uh, we do have quite a few, uh, super chats coming in here. Nine ninety nine, uh, nine or ninety nine dollars ninety nine cents. A lot of nines from JW. Thank you very much for that. Really do appreciate it. Happy Easter, gentlemen. Always proud to support what I consider the most reputable slot channel out there. Well, thank you very much, JW, for that. We really do appreciate it so very much. And $2 uh, here from Dennis Bravo. Any uh, Anything gaming industry uh, related entices me. Very good. That's awesome. Thank you yeah, very right much for that. that. And then also, uh, thank you very much, uh, Lisa, for gifting those memberships. I know we had another membership uh, gift in here as well. We got a really busy stream in here. There's already <laughs> 472 people in here, and we've got tons and tons of questions lined up. You guys are rocking it tonight. We're going to try to get through as many of them as we possibly can. But thank you guys very much for all of your questions and for those super chats. Really do appreciate it. All right, Mark, you want to go ahead and grab one? Sure. Let's do it. Uh, Craig says, uh, please talk about the various versions of the bingo type games, Hunt for Neptune's Gold. Uh, these versions are some of the most popular games in Oklahoma casinos. Thanks. Yeah, they're the most popular. Personally, I do not like them. Um, I stick with the actual reels like Lucky Ducky, um, Mr. Moneybags, Hot Red Ruby. Those are the ones that, uh, uh, Dave and I typically play a lot. Um, it's just, they're a lot better, in my opinion. Uh, we've tried Hunt for Neptune's Gold. We've tried all the different variations. There are a lot of different versions of it. Um, just not a big fan of them. Uh, if, if you like it, fine, but it's not a good, especially for bankroll building, I do not recommend playing those. I think they're a little bit higher on the volatility scale, but they are certainly popular and they are loud, and I hate that. Yeah. <laughs> they are loud. A lot of bells. Loud. Yeah. Uh, let's see. And I will not imitate what they sound like. Cause I'll make yeah. it. Go up, so. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, Dan's 30 says, uh, one hand paint in 30 years and I watch station. She gets like five and an hour. Well, it's all about your bet size guys. Like the closer you can bet to the 1200, you're going to get more hand pays, but that should not be what your focus is. Like, don't, don't focus on getting a hand pay just for the sake of it. Especially if you're really pushing your risk. Um, you know, do it after you do the bankroll building first and then try to push your risk to get a hand pay. But it'll happen. I mean, if you don't bet high like Stacy does, then it will happen eventually. It will. Um, it just will take time because you're not betting close to that $1,200. You play $100 machines, that's like getting a $12 win on a dollar bet. It's the same thing. 
And so, I mean, just do the math there. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, don't chase the hand pay. It'll happen. Uh, stay within your comfort level. Uh, you know, don't don't think that you need to emulate to get a hand pay. I think that's probably the the slippery slope that a lot of people fall into. Yeah, and definitely. Lee says, what's your thoughts on Dragon Link? Well, you know, as I always say, don't feed the dragons. Uh, Dragon Cash, Dragon Link. Uh, it's kind of a joke, but there is some seriousness behind it. Um, those games are just higher in volatility. If you are going to play those, uh, limit yourself to a certain number of spins. Um, don't chase the bonus. Don't, those are the games that you don't want to sit down at and say, I'm going to play this until I get the bonus, or I'm going to play this until I hit that major. Uh, that's bad thinking. That will lead you down into some trouble. So for games like that, all of the Lightning Links, uh, Dragon Links, you know, any of the high, big volatility games like that, before you even sit down, say, I'm going to commit to 30 spins. And if you got to put a little counter on your phone and use that, whatever, um, I strongly urge you to do that. And after 30 spins are up, whether you got the bonus or not, you got to get up and get the hell out and go play something that's lower in volatility. And then try it again. You go back to, to the, you know, the double diamonds, the, the lower volatility games, you build your bankroll back up. And then you try it again because those high volatility games like the Dragon Links and all that are fine to play, but it's a big risk reward. OK, so you, you're putting a lot of risk on the line for a potential for a very nice reward. Right. But I just don't recommend especially starting there um, and limit yourself to number of spins. Don't don't try to chase the bonus. That's how they get you on those games. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's how they get you. All right. I'll absolutely. take a yeah, go ahead. here. Let's see. And yeah, Moto Dent says, I went to the casino last night. I woke up and my butt hurts. My wall is empty. What happened? <laughs> You're sitting in the chair way too long. That's what happened. <laughs> oh, man, that's happened to so many of us. You just sit there and just chase and chase and chase. And then your wallet's empty. And yeah, that's not good. It's all about um, that. Yeah, that chase is just that. that That's the part that'll get you. you that's know? What, I mean, that's why you got to get the box, guys. Like, eh. You got to put money in the box. That's what the only thing for a lot of us that will stop that chase. I know a lot of you have a lot of willpower and can do it and commit to it. But man, when you're in the action, especially when you've got a bunch of friends and everybody's winning and it's exciting or you're on YouTube and you're filming for YouTube, <laughs> it's so right. hard to just take that break and stuff that money away. But you got to do it. Um, and you'll thank yourself later if you get one of those boxes. So, Absolutely. And uh, Louisiana Casino guy says, if I'm uh, being, if I'm playing a three coin dollar slot and play one coin, then two, then three, is it like changing machines when I change the amount of it? No, it's not. Not on mm -hmm. that case. Only the denomination. If the denomination is different, that is like changing to a different machine. Uh, but what you just described doesn't make any difference. Again, evaluate the game. See if you are losing out by not betting max. Uh, super important. Like if you told me I'm playing a three coin top dollar but i only bet one is that good the answer is no that is terrible yeah <laughs> because you're not going to get the bonus <laughs> and so you got to play that game for the bonus right and so you know but if it's a double diamond and there's no benefit to betting max then bet one credit it's fine totally yeah. fine. but you just got to evaluate the game and make sure you're not giving up because like we always say the return to player potential on every game is assuming that you are covering all the features of the game so if you are not covering all the features of the game, you are literally just hurting yourself on potential return. So don't please evaluate the game before. It's so important. So important. Absolutely. Always read, always read your pay table. Yes. Always read your pay table. And uh 499 uh, super chat here from Adam. Adam, thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Adam. We absolutely will. We do try our hardest for sure. Um, all right. Uh, Andrew here says, uh, I'll be using free play at my next visit. Does free play cause the machine to behave differently than with cash? No, uh, it will not cause the machine to behave di any differently than with cash. Use your free play. Absolutely. You can still win on free play. Um, and Adam G says, uh, does video blackjack pay differently than playing at a table? It could. Um, now video, video table games, um, a lot of people think, you know, like, oh, the video table games are, you know, set differently or something like that. They do have a payback percentage, but the shuffling of the cards and how the cards are dealt does not play into account with that. Uh, and what I mean by that is how they regulate that is by what the game pays. So on video blackjack, for example, you might sit at a table and maybe they don't let you double. 
or they don't let you split aces or something like that. The rules might be different. Um, or, you know, maybe black, you know, something pays different. It, it really is all dependent. That's how they control the payback percentage on those table games. Um, but the act of, you know, the, the digital cards being shuffled and, you know, what you're dealt, that act is still random and that act is still the same as a normal table game. It's just a matter of what you can do and what certain things pay that changes. So um, could it pay differently? Possibly. It absolutely possibly could. All right. Is a shaky shaky just a random feature that can happen at any time? Not sure how those work. That's a good question. We actually haven't had this one before. Yes, it is random. It can happen on, it can happen on anything. Um, so uh, how those work is essentially what happens. You hit the spin button, the RNG will decide like, for example, uh, we'll use the new huff and even more puff. So you might see, you know, three hats fall on the screen but the RNG has already made the decision that you're going to get the bonus on that spin anyway. So it'll have, you know, the little wolf tail come out and then he blows the three more hats on to give you the bonus. So the RNG already knows what that result is going to be. That result has already been decided that yes, this, this spin is going to be a bonus. And then the shaky shaky feature is just kind of the dramatic effect of you finally getting that bonus. So very good question. All right. Uh, Karen on Facebook uh, asks, I've been following your videos. Do you ever give up on a game and move over to the next one? Good question. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, there's times, you know, if you're sitting at a game and it's, you know, you're getting bored with it or you're just not feeling it. Absolutely. You can get up and move. Um, now, slot machines don't run hot or cold. You still have the exact same chance on every single spin. Um, but yeah, there's many times where I'm just like, I'm not feeling this one. I'm going to get up and move. And that's perfectly fine and normal. You can absolutely do that. All right. Uh, go ahead, Mark. I'll let you take uh, take one. Okay. And uh, everybody's talking about the shaky shakies now. Uh, Chris oh, yeah. says, I love the shaky shaky on Money Link and uh, Will Forge and Cash Links. Yeah. They are fun. Um, it's like the, it's called anticipation. Um, it, and it's it's a way that you can kind of get excited that something good is about to happen. I, mm -hmm. I love it. I think it's good. It doesn't bother me at all. Now, if they do the shaky shaky and then they don't give it to you, that I hate. Some yeah, of it, like the Wheel of Fortune gold spin does that, and that drives me nuts. All right, uh, Mark Lindblom says, Do new machines pay out more in the beginning to get people to play? Oh man, a big YouTuber just said this on one of his videos recently. No, no, <laughs> they don't set like it. I understand why people think that because it makes logical sense, right? They're gonna put the new games right in the front, you know, where everybody sees them, and they're gonna set them really high so everybody gets hooked on them, and then as soon as they get hooked. They crank them down so everybody loses their ass on them. No, that does not happen in a casino. That's not they how it works. That. that is not how it works. Um, they just, they set them and they forget them. <laughs> they just leave them there. Uh, so no, that, that does not happen. They don't set set it for reasons like that. It's just, it's never something that they would do. But good question. I saw that Very come up. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I remember seeing that. Somebody <laughs> said that. Oh, yeah, it was a new game. I think it was on Huff and more, even more. Yeah, oh, they always set those the real high whenever they first put them in. No, not not no. a thing. Not, not a thing. thing. You can, Sorry. yeah, it, <laughs> yeah, not not a thing. There have been plenty of new machines that have come out that uh, Mark and I both have sat down and played, and we've lost our ass. So yeah, no, oh yeah, not a oh, thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Hey, four ninety nine uh, super chat here from Money Mike. Money Mike, thank you very much for that. Uh, for the Dragon Link games, uh, when you bet the same amount. Why are some majors 900 and some are 8,000 and some are 40,000? That's a good question. So it really, um, number one, it's going to depend on the casino. It's going to depend on uh, the max, you know, max bet, max denom that that game carries with it. Uh, the major is one of those progressives that is uh, denomination wide. So like, say, for example, if you've got a dragon link that is like, you know, from 10 cent, 10 cent all the way up to $2 denom and 25 lines or $25 denom and 25 lines, obviously that's going to be a lot higher. So it really just depends on what's the max bet amount that you can do on that machine with the max denom. Um, and then also whatever the casino has, has that set for. So, cause that is, you know, that is something that uh, plays a big part is what the denom and what the max bet is on that, on that game. Cause a lot of them are very different. Um, so it could be that, you know, you're comparing one, uh, penny game to a $25 game. It's, and all over the board from there. So that's kind of where those come from. There's a lot of factors involved 
uh, involved with that. But thank you very much for your super chat and for your question. Really do appreciate it. Got another super chat here from Sober Surfer, $1.99. Thank you very much. Does a casino care if you place Lucky Stone <laughs> on a slot machine? No, oh, your, your hat's, hat's falling. falling. My hat's <laughs> falling. Mark's Must tinfoil mean something's hat. coming here, right? <laughs> no, the, ca the casino's not going to care. They're not going to care at all. And uh, Lucky Jewels just gifted 10 more memberships. Thank you very much, guys, for that. Really do appreciate it. If you are receiving a gifted membership, uh, remember that Member Monday uh, starts tomorrow. Um, that'll be tomorrow at 7 p.m. Central. Our YouTube members do get an additional bonus live stream on Mondays. Uh, and it's a lot more laid back and uh, a lot of fun. So thank you very much for that, Lucky Jewels. Really do appreciate that. Um, and, uh, grab your question here. What are your thoughts on the nugget or any casino posting wins on Facebook? I think it's fine. Um, it's always exciting to see. Uh, I always look at those and I'm like, oh, wow. Like, especially like, I know the Rose will do that too. And uh, the nugget does that they'll post a big win and it's like, oh, wow, I was just there. Uh, I saw somebody <laughs> want a really big amount on the new quick hit game, uh, there at the nugget. So I thought that was really cool that they posted it. It was very cool. All right. All right. Let's uh, see here. Go ahead, Mark, if you want to grab okay. one. Um, uh, Moto Den said, I didn't follow Cowboys playing last night. It was my fault. That's okay. I mean, we're all it humans. Happens. We're all trying. Yeah, we're all trying to work better here. And it's, you know, at least you you knew that you did it. That's always step number one <laughs> is admit it. Um, and number two is just try to think of something, self-reflect and think of something that you need to do differently to prevent yourself from repeating it. Um, that's, that's what we should do with everything. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, that's what you do as a human being, right? You don't want to repeat your mistakes. So find some way to prevent that mistake from happening again, whether it's to get a lockbox or to, uh, use budget envelopes or put money in the safe or what, whatever it is, whatever went wrong. We don't know what went wrong specifically, but try to do something and you don't, don't feel like you need to do the whole thing. The next trip, just try one thing and just try to work it into your, 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 visit and how you actually handle yourself in the casino and you'll get better you'll get definitely get better it's a learning all about experience. more control yeah it's very much a learning experience we're all we're all Anybody that says that you just walk into the casino and push a button why the hell are you talking about all this stuff it's not that simple it's a yeah no. listen when you walk into <laughs> when you walk into a casino it is psychological warfare it really is um i mean you're getting pulled in so many different directions big progressives must hit buys are almost there uh atms you know slot tournaments like i mean it's just <laughs> it's hard to keep level-headed when you get into the casino so oh uh, yeah there's definitely a lot to it so all right uh, very very good question on yeah, that. yeah 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 and drew says example will a pause and play change up things well it'll change up things but it doesn't give you any kind of advantage uh there, there's no way that you can forget predict the outcome of the next spin whether you wait or not um but technically speaking, it does because you're not pushing the button at the same time that you would have before. But it's a microsecond difference. You know, it's it's not something that you can try to time. You know, there's there's a lot of people out there. Oh, I have a system where if you before you hit the spin on the wheel of fortune, if you wait 10 seconds, it'll land on a bigger spot. Whatever. Yeah, <laughs> whatever. No, that's not true. It's just, you know, changing your timing is just changing your timing. That's all. It's exactly. Done. And uh, also just a, just a quick reminder, guys, because uh, we have uh, this is actually a really busy show. We have almost 700 people watching on uh, both YouTube and Facebook right now. Um, so we are going to try to get through as many questions as we can. We know we got a lot of questions backed up, um, but if we don't happen to get to your question, as a reminder, you can always ask your question 24-7 at our free chat forums, which is at ropethejackpot.com. So I uh, just want to put that out there. So if we happen to miss your question or um, we don't get to it, uh, you've got the website to use. So always keep that in mind. All right. Sounds good. Um, I guess I'll keep going here. Steven, yeah. uh, if you get a big hit, but no hand pay, is it best to cash out and start over or keep rolling with it? Um, yeah, you should never just keep rolling with it because of what has just happened, right? Like machines do not have knowledge. They don't change the future outcomes based on what has happened in the past. This is probably one of the most popular things that people believe is that whatever has happened in the past is controlling what's going to happen in the future on a slot machine. And it can't by law, it can't. So if you did hit a big hit with no hand pay, don't 
see that as a reason to stop or a reason to keep playing. <laughs> That's basically what I'm trying to say. Right. Like there's no, it does, it's not giving you any kind of knowledge or foresight or you know, not foresight, but yeah, I guess foresight into what is potentially going to happen next. And so you've heard it before people that say, you know, never play a machine that is showing three double diamonds on it because it's just paid out big. It's going to be on the take. And then you hear the opposite of that. No, you should play that machine because it's showing three double diamonds and means it's going to be, it's in a paying cycle. <laughs> yeah, no. So no, it's the future outcomes have nothing to do with the past. So do what Absolutely. makes you feel, feel good. All right. Back to you, Bradley. Uh, Chase Newton, dollar uh, 99 super chat. Thank you very much, Chase, for that. Really do appreciate it. What are the top five bankroll building slots in Vegas? Well, the nice thing about Las Vegas, um, and first of all, thank you very much for your super chat. Las Vegas has every machine under the sun available, uh, pretty much any machine that you can find. Uh, bankroll building slots, I mean, there's going to be tons of those lower volatile games everywhere. Uh, it really depends on your budget. You know, I, what are what are we working with? Are we working with 100? Are we working with 1,000? Are we working with 10,000? You know, what, what kind of a budget are we building? Um, but really, um, you want to stick to, you know, for budget building, something that's going to be low key and consistent. So you want five examples. You've got, um, you know, double diamond is a good one. Um, triple stars is another good one. Just the older, simpler classic games. Just make sure you're looking at the pay table because some of them can be higher in volatility. Um, avoid games that have like a lot of multipliers, um, stuff like that. So, uh, really, I mean, th there's a whole lot more than five. Um, like I said, double diamond, triple diamond, triple stars, you, you, you could even use pinball as one or top dollar as one at the lower levels, like dollar level. Um, so there really is a lot, uh, and Vegas just has an absolute immense ton of them uh, at almost every single casino that you go to. Um, you can also, um, if you go on to our website, ropethejackpot.com and our forums, uh, we have a really good uh, different guide. I know um, a lot of the users uh, in the forums, they've been putting like their machines and where what casinos they're at and stuff like that on the forums. So uh, check that out as well. And thank you very much for your super chat. Really do appreciate it. Uh, Kim says, uh, I booked four consecutive nights comped. Uh, one of the days slash nights, uh, I will not be in the casino. Um, to play or sleep uh will that day of inactivity hurt my theo for future comps no it won't not at all you don't have to worry about that uh Birgit says uh hey brantley and mark happy easter can you feed the dragons or bingo machine uh bingo. class two i've seen people um win on them uh even jackpots thanks um you know Class two, I mean, class. Two, there's tons of different options with class two. You can absolutely win good jackpots at class two. Um, really, I don't like any of the. I don't really like any of the dragon games. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, if it's if it's a class, two, can you feed the dragons on the bingo machine? So I'm assuming we're talking about class two versions. Yeah, I think that's what of the, those. Um, yeah. Mark, what do you think about that? Because you're the know. you're kind of the class two guy. I you know, know, but I, yeah, two it's. <laughs> God, it is not a game I would play and yeah. certainly not one to bankroll build on, but same rules apply is what we mentioned earlier in the stream. Just, just play it with an intent to do a certain number of spins and then get out regardless of if you win or not. Same way. Absolutely. And uh, here's a good super chat here, bringing up a good one from Jeff 777 <laughs> super chat. Thank you very much for that. Shout out to Mark on his video. Why can't people believe how slots work? That was a good video. Y'all, if you haven't seen <laughs> it, go over to the gamble smart channel and check it out. It was a really, really good. Episode. If you're really brave, read the comments. <laughs> yeah. And Jeff, Jeff is a hundred percent correct on that. It's, it needs it to be viewed brutal. by every, every slot player out there. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and you get to see me wear a tinfoil hat. So that's why. That's yeah. That's what the tinfoil hat's from. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, Thank you very much for that. Really do appreciate it. Uh, let's see. Joe says, do you know if in video poker, the next hand is determined by when you hit the button or is it predetermined it's the same true for uh hold cards and draw so it's not predetermined um right. on video poker it's not predetermined it's constantly cycling when you hold your cards it's still cycling and then when you hit that deal button again then it'll generate those cards so it is not predetermined on that whatsoever all right mark i'll hand it back to you okay uh, let's see 
All right. Bobby Ross says, do different states have different payouts? If so, what state statistically has the base, uh, best odds? It's not based on the state. Uh, it really isn't. Like, um, states will put minimums in place um, that casinos have to set, you know, their slot machines to. But it's really property specific. And mm. if there's any property with competition, you can bet that they're going to be in line with the competition um, because it's just the only way they can survive, right? Um, the ones that I'm always a little weary of is if there's no competition and it's a three hour drive to get to any other ones. Those are the ones that I'm kind of like, maybe, maybe not. I mean, we don't know, but competition is what keeps those in line. Uh, for example, every single casino on the Las Vegas Strip is going to be within probably half a percent or one percent on each of the denominations um, because they they have to. Right. And if this is proof, you can prove this by looking at the return date over the last five or six years, they're all pretty much in line, you know, and that's typical. That's what you're going to see, but it's not on the state level. Um, it's certainly not. Um, but again, we're not going to get into a payout percentages because Brantley and I will probably get on a soapbox for the next 35 <laughs> minutes talking about that. But um, it's best just to not worry so much about payback percentages, focus on all the other things that you can deal with, uh, you know, like your budget and playing the machines you like and all that kind of stuff. Stick with the low volatility. Don't worry so much about payback percentage. It's not something you're going to notice in the short term. Exactly. Very well said, Mark. And Very well I'll take, said. Oh, go ahead. Oh, you got it. Sorry, I was no, going to grab this one here from, uh, from Stephen. Go no, you're good. Is uh, is there a source uh, for a list of slots uh, are in a casino for Vegas? Keep up the straight shooting info. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, you know, there's not any kind of like a master list. But again, this is why... Um, we came out with our website, ropethejackpot.com. It's very, very unique in the fact of we do have our chat forum on there and we have a chat forum for every single state on there and it's really easy. If you are ever looking for a particular slot machine and you're going to some place like say Las Vegas, you can go on the forum into the Nevada page and post like, hey, I'm looking for uh, what casinos have top dollar. And inevitably somebody in that chat is going to respond with exactly what what casino has has what machine so uh that's really the best and closest we can get it's a fantastic resource it's always free i'm going to put that on the website one more time i always recommend people use this uh because it's just it's fantastic and it's a very active forum too so people are always active in there and thank you very much for that all right mark go ahead with uh with yours okay no you're good uh let's see where was i uh, angel says how much you recommend taking every time this is a very personal question um, it's going to, a couple of things. One has to be money that you can set on fire. As Dave always says on our channel, <laughs> like you got to be able to just forget about it. It's money that you will most likely lose. Okay. Think of it as entertainment. It's like you go into the movies or go into a, you know, a sporting event or something like that. It's treat it like that. It's money that you can safely and comfortably lose, uh, for a little bit of entertainment value. Um, that's number one. Number two, you want, you don't have to bring a lot either. Um, I mean, Dave and I spent the entire day in downtown on a hundred bucks for gambling and we survived and we actually ended up ahead. I think we were around 300 bucks or something that we ended up with at the end of the day um, on a hundred bucks. So you can certainly do that. It takes a little bit more work and a little bit more focus, but you don't have to bring a lot of money to a casino to turn a profit. You just got to know when to stop and walk out the door. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. So first bring money that you're comfortable with losing. Um, you know, I, that's really it. I mean, seriously, we cannot give you a figure. I mean, we know people that go in with 20 bucks, you know, and have fun and that's, you can do it. You can do it. it it's probably not going to work out in your favor because you're going to have to be playing penny machines at the lowest amount, but you never know. You never know. You can you still get know. those grand jackpots on 40 cent bets. <laughs> you know, there's been some like wild that. stories. There's been wild stories out there. Absolutely. Um, but you, you are a hundred percent correct. Mark, it is 100% a very personal choice on what you bring with you to the casino. And as long as you can safely and comfortably afford to lose it, then that's really the big, big thing. Right. Um, yep. Ken on Facebook says, what's the, where's the best place to buy a lucky ducky machine for my house? So if, if it's the class two lucky ducky, you can't get a class two for your house. Yeah. yeah. Um, no red screens at home. Yeah. So for class two, again, it's not, you're not playing the machine. You're playing against a pool of other people on a, on a bingo server. So you can't have, obviously 
you don't have a bingo server at your house. So you would, that machine wouldn't <laughs> right. work. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to buy any kind of a class. And you would need two. to, because you'd have to play. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to buy any kind of a class two machine. But um, if you guys are interested in purchasing your own slot machine, uh, we do have um, now in our shop, there is a guide uh, to our uh, to today's video sponsor, which is Slot Machines Unlimited, um, the nation's largest and most trusted retailer of slot machines. So if you are interested in purchasing a slot machine for your home, they have thousands of titles uh, and we have all of their information at our website, which is ropethejackpot.com forward slash shop. And if you mention Cowboy Slots, you will even save money on your order. And they even offer technical support. So if you're not technically inclined, they do have that as well. And they do have a helpline and all of that. And they can arrange for shipping. So if you are looking for a slot machine, that would be the best place to uh, to get started with that. All right. Let me see what other one here. We got a lot of good questions in here. Karen now on Facebook asks, uh, Brantley, awesome video on Frankenstein, my favorite slot. That was a great video. If you guys haven't seen that video, I hit the major on Frankenstein, which the major is the third highest progressive you can get. You've got the grand... <laughs> And then you've got the super and then you've got the major. So that's the third highest one you can get. Uh, and I hadn't seen anybody actually hit the major yet. So uh, I was really excited. That was a great video. If you guys haven't seen it, it's in the library. Check it out. Uh, going to MGM, can you say again where to find Cherry's Jubilee? The casino is massive. So um, so you already know that the Cherry's Jubilee is only at MGM, but it's going to be by the Grand Walk uh, Noodle Bar. I think it's called Grand Walk, isn't it, Mark? The Grand Walk. It's, uh, something. Oh, it's, by the, it's by the Noodle <laughs> Bar. It's right outside um, the Highlander room. So yeah, right outside the Highlander room. And, and, where the high and the room room bar. It's right out there, yeah. That's exactly where they will be at. Yeah. And uh, Jim on Facebook asks, is the bonus on hold and spin predetermined? No, it is not predetermined on that one. Not predetermined on that one. I'll, no, I'll take one more here. Um, do you sports bet? Sometimes sports betting can be fun. Um, I really don't know what I'm doing with sports betting. I'm not really a sports <laughs> person. I don't follow sports. Uh, but I just look at the, you know, kind of the matchups and statistics and stuff like that. And I go from there. I, I dabble in it occasionally. It's not anything big that I do, but uh, yeah, absolutely. I do sometimes. All right, Mark. Uh, not me, because number one, it's not available in my state. But number two, I wouldn't know what I'm doing either. I don't understand <laughs> the boards. I look at the boards. I know it has something to do with odds and all that. It's like, yeah, I'm just not getting into it. Yeah. I feel like not it'd be a, a slippery slope if I did. <laughs> not, not the sports betting types. No, definitely not. Uh, I just don't watch, watch a lot of sports either. All right. Um, Karen says, I won $1,300 on a 50-cent bet in Lake Tahoe nice. last month. Totally surprised. So, yeah, 50 cents. It can happen. It's harder to happen, but it can happen. And uh, Lake Tahoe, man, those four casinos are real nice. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Way better than Reno. Guys, if you're going to go to Reno, drive the extra 25 to miles Tahoe. down to Lake Tahoe and play there. It's it's beautiful out there. Um, and I enjoyed those casinos. They had a lot of lower denomination stuff where Reno is kind of like the Las Vegas Strip, essentially. Um, so a lot of older machines. They had quarter pinball there. You know, just, you know, it was great. I loved it. So congratulations on that and cheap slots and cheap gambling and by the way i love your icon that is triple top dollar that's awesome chris day will not sell to me so i'm gonna sit on a soapbox right now and say <laughs> chris please for the love of god i've been looking for that forever anyway thoughts on the new butterfly sevens with respin feature uh i like this game uh brantley and actually brantley and i actually got to play it in the uh test room you remember in yeah, arena. It, it was pretty cool. It's yeah, like it their take, cool. on, it their take on a red screen. For yeah, oh, bringing, oh, but you're not supposed to say red screen. That. That's not what they're doing. <laughs> it's a ye yellow screen. <laughs> yeah, the yellow screen. <laughs> the, the yellow screen. screen. Uh, it, it's, it looks fun. I've seen uh, several YouTubers already playing it. Um, I'll definitely take a stab at it, but only if it's lower in denomination because it's a nine-line game. Um, and I think you... Well, yeah, I think it's only nine-line. There, there might be a five line version, but I think it's just nine. That's it's a little steep. That's yeah. where a lot of them are going these days. So only if I can find them in quarters or something. But typically when they come out with games like that, they're in the high limit rooms first or they're kind of higher in the domination. And then as they, you know, produce more and put them more on the show on the uh, floor, they'll come out with the lower denomination. So we're gonna have to just wait a little bit on that. But it looks fun. I it like that. fun. Yeah, um, for sure. 
let's see. David says, have you ever heard of any slot machine that was so uh, super generous on wins payouts that the casino removed it? No, they don't do that. They just, no. they do not do that. Um, slot machines are not designed to be generous or not generous. They're designed to run a math program and that's it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, that's it. Like if it's set at 90%, the casino knows that for the life that that machine is sitting on the floor being played, they're going to get 10% of everything that is put into that machine. That's it. It's not because it's generous or anything like that. That's because that's what the setting is. And that's how the math works out period. So they get rid of games for a lot of different reasons. License agreements are up. Um, that's probably one of the main reasons is license agreements. But the second second reason is it's just not getting played anymore. I mean, Brantley and I have talked about this exhaustingly. It's like yeah. casinos, like the the space inside of a casino is so precious, they will never risk putting a machine in there that's not getting played. That's lost revenue right there, you know? And so that, that space is very valuable. So if there's a game nobody's playing. You better believe they're going to take it out and put something else in there. Oh yeah. People will play. It's all about getting people to play it because that's the only way revenue is going to get generated. So absolutely. Uh, slots are very valuable on that. Yes, and welcome in, Jody. <laughs> hey, you're, Jody's here. Oh, Oh God, this is not good. <laughs> and J dog. Thank you very much for uh, gifting memberships. A lot of gifted memberships tonight. Um, should make for a really cool member Monday. You should show have like 500 cool. people in the, uh, I know. Yeah. So all of you, all of you guys <laughs> that were gifted memberships, be sure to tune in tomorrow, same time, 7 PM central. Uh, it's, uh, the member show goes a little different. So, uh, be sure to tune into that. And, um, uh, let's see here. Uh, Mark says, uh, if I hit a bonus, is the bonus predetermined? Uh, the outcome uh, will be the second I hit the button in the bonus. The second you hit the button in the bonus, then if you're doing like, um, you know, a hold and spin or anything like that, you hit the button, then it decides. You hit the button, then it decides. You hit the button. So, yeah, that's it's determined the second that you hit that button. Absolutely. Um, let's see. CSX. With pinball and top dollar, does the frequency slash average of the bonus round change with the denom? No, it does not. Uh, I've noticed one dollar double top dollar bonus hits more frequently than five dollar denom. No, um, you probably are feeling the notice because your money's going a lot faster <laughs> and you're not getting as many spins out of it. That could be one reason, uh, but yeah. no, the bonus round frequency, the average does not change. Uh, that's built into the game level, has nothing to do with denomination or setting or anything like that but very good question yeah good one any you want to add any to that mark no i mean it's important that you know that like I, and this is where people i'm glad you asked this because a lot of people don't and that's where the myth train just starts to roll mm -hmm. um, because they feel like you know there's there's something going on where this same game that looks exactly the same but when i play the one on the left i get bonus rounds and i play the one on the right i don't get bonus rounds so what gives? Why is that? Right. Um, randomness. You're just not hitting it at the right time on each of those machines. If you were to sit down and play both of those machines for 10 million pulls each, they're going to come out to be the same. But in the short term, you're not going to be able to see that. You're going to get heavy swings. It's just like flipping a coin and getting seven heads in a row. Well, wait a minute. It's supposed. To, why can't it get tails? I don't get it. Why is it seven heads? It's like because you're going to randomness just produces strings like that. It produces you know, a string of wins and a string of losses. And it's just all part of how randomness works. And that's what you're experiencing there. So you'd have to play it a lot, lot longer, a lot longer yeah. to be able to make that determination. But, you know, same, same equal game, everything. Absolutely. All right. Uh, Paul Keller says, I got my first hand pay in 2009 and they gave me some coupons for the restaurant and the casino and a few other little add-ons. Do any casinos give out extras like that anymore when you get a hand pay? God, no. No, <laughs> not in Vegas. Vegas. Um, not, no, not I mean, Vegas anymore. I think the only thing that they typically might do is they might bump your status or your player's card. Winstar does this, you know, you get a hand pay, they'll just bump you to the next status, um, things like that. But as for giving you free stuff, not so much anymore. All, all that stuff has kind of gone away. It's real sad, but you know, it is what it is these days. But if you do find a casino, if it is going to be any casino, it's going to be one of the smaller ones where they're trying oh, yeah. to really encourage you to stay there. And, you know, that those are the ones that will do things like that. Um, so don't discount that. I'm just like vague or like 
Brantley said, it's Las Vegas. You're not going to find stuff like that. Yeah, the, any of not the big anymore. Mechas, yeah, never going to see that. Not anymore. And, uh, and uh, oh, you got oh, one. Go sorry. ahead. Sorry, <laughs> I was. No, you're I was good. Going you're good. You're good. Uh, us and them was saying I, I i can't even find the button to become a member is it in the chat so if you are interested in becoming a member if you're watching on youtube it is down in the video description so if you are interested in becoming a member it is 100 percent optional but we always love and appreciate the support plus you get a little uh some extra benefits here and there um that link is down in the description of the video on youtube uh and on facebook as well so thank you very much for that all right mark go ahead okay all good um pete says hey guys online slots again draftkings.com they changed the rng or is it just like a casino trying to do the same meaning uh, what they have to go through to do something like that thank you great channel love it so uh any of the licensed casinos like DraftKings, caesars um fanduel all those are going to go through the same process and procedure for changing uh, payback percentages and game things and all that kind of stuff because they're regulated in the same way that a like a, a physical location would be um, but we're not talking about the other casinos. Well, we won't get into that because that'll be a long time. That, but... Make that determination or yeah, make, that, make that distinction. That is the biggest thing is there's the legal, real online casinos. You can tell if it's legal and real because it will only let you use it in certain states that they have agreements with. So like FanDuel, FanDuel is good. DraftKings is good. Caesars, MGM, those are good. What's not good is when you get into all of these social casinos that are, sweepstakes. you know, yeah. oh, they use a sweepstakes. Oh, they use this or they use something else. Those are not regulated. Those are not slots and don't play those. <laughs> yeah. We, can, we, can't, be, say, we, we can't, can't answer that anymore. question because it's probably not. <laughs> they could probably do it yeah. whatever they want. So no regulation there. All right, Brantley, I'll let you take it over. All right. Let's see. Uh, Blind Traveler says, hey, Brantley and Mark, uh, this is Josh. By playing your favorite game uh, multiple times, can you gain a strategy on the game? It, you really can't gain a strategy on on the game. The, the only strategy that you can control, you know, and this is something that we talk about a lot, because I, I think when people think of slot strategy, they automatically start going to associate what can I do to the machine? That's not what slot strategy is. Slot strategy is what can you do to yourself? It's all about controlling your budget. It's it's amazing how much money people actually do make at slots, but it doesn't leave the building because they don't know when to stop. They don't know when to move. They don't know, you know, playing a game that is right for their budget, stuff like that. Um, you can't gain a strategy on a game by playing it multiple times. Um, I love the game of pinball. Pinball is my all-time favorite game. I have it here at the house. Here at my house, it is set on the best possible, you know, odds and settings that it could possibly ever have. And I, I can go 300 spins and never get a pinball. It, it, it's just, it happens like that. Um, yeah. You can't gain a strategy on a slot machine, but you can get a strategy with yourself and you can make the decision of, you know what, I love this game, but it's really kind of doesn't fit my budget that I'm going for. It's not on my path. So I'm going to pick a different game. And then when I build up some money, I'll come back to that game. Stuff like that is what slot strategy is. So always keep that in mind. But you can't gain an advantage or anything on a, you know, on a slot, so to speak, by doing something particular to it or playing it so many times. Um, so I hope I hope that helps to answer your question there. Well said. And uh, let's see. Nanner, hope I said that right. Um, maybe just bad luck, but play Tabasco dollar machine, $2 max three real, but never seemed to hit much on that machine after fiending at 50 to a hundred dollars. Um, what do you think that would be a low volatility game? Is that correct? Tabasco is one of the tricky ones. It is not a low in volatility game. If you look no. at, um, easiest way to always tell with volatility is look at what you're betting in correlation to the max amount that that machine pays out. So like double diamond, for example, you, you might be betting like uh, $2 max, $2 max on a three real game. Max payout could be 100, uh, 1,600 credits or 1,800 credits, something like that. But you look at, right. Yeah. But you look at Tabasco and it's 10,000 credits or it's higher or something like that. That gap is the volatility. So look at that top line payout in relation to what you're betting. Um, 
Tabasco seems like it would be in low and low in volatility, but this is kind of where it comes into really, you know, teaching yourself. This is where our videos, our education videos really do come into play. Um, because this is a lot of what we teach of watching for particular things like that. Cause Tabasco can be a tricky one. Uh, I would recommend moving to a different machine, a different game title, especially if you're looking for low volatility and building up a bankroll. Uh, Tabasco is not the game to do it on. Uh, do you want to add to any of that? Yeah, I wanted Mark? to, I was looking at the pay table real quick. Yes. So here's another clue. Um, I guess I, there's no way to put this up here, but, um, I just, I can talk to it. So here's, here's the, another clue that you can look at. So on a typical, like double diamond, you start with a cherry, which pays you your bet back essentially. And then two cherries and then single bars and then double bars and then triple bars, right? On Tabasco, it literally starts at triple bars. So you're not getting the cherry. I mean, the cherry is just the Tabasco symbol, but then there's a jump. The next one up is like 50, <laughs> you know, yeah. So you're missing all those lower pays. And that's why it's not hitting as frequently because you can't get those. Like I think the blue sevens are 50 credits on a two coin bet. That's the next highest thing unless you get mixed sevens. And so because it's missing that stuff that you would find on a lower volatility game like Double Diamond, that's another clue, not just the high amount, which that is mm -hmm. a big, big factor. But, you know, just something I had to look to make sure. And, yeah, it's definitely true. And plus, Brantley is right. The two coin max is 5,000 credits yeah. on Tabasco instead of 1,600 on Double Diamond. So that's that's definitely a good clue. Yep. All right. Uh, another one from Cheap Slots and Cheap Gambling. What's your thoughts on the new three, four, five times pay with double bonus win? Uh, Dave and I uh, played this in Vegas, and it kicked our butts bad. Um, volatility is huge on that one. <laughs> Just not even getting much of anything. Um, and even when we finally got the bonus round, it, it didn't pay very well. So I, that's a miss for me. Unfortunately, I don't think that one's very good, um, but I do like um, the diamond jackpots, which is kind of the other variant of that. That one's a little bit better, in my opinion. So, but we only played it a couple times, so take that as you will. But it just didn't. It, the feeling wasn't there. All right. Uh, now here, here's a good one from uh, from Proud Monkey. Uh, Proud Monkey, been thinking a lot lately about the Gaming Commission overseeing casinos, but is there an oversight on the Gaming Commission? I feel like the next uh, big scandal will be a corrupt uh, commission employee thoughts. So, you know, one of the things with um, with the Gaming Commission, well, with the gaming industry in general, there are so many webs and so many people. There's a lot of chefs in this kitchen. Um it's never just one person watching one person overseeing. There's so many steps to the process and there's so many different departments and different people and all of that. It's never just one person. So, you know, the gaming commissions and the casinos, they have been set up in a way to literally, because the thing is, is what a lot of people, you know, a lot of people don't realize the biggest threat that a casino faces is actually internal. They know that and they have planned for that. So they have multifaceted webs of people that oversee and watch. It's never just one person. Um, you know, even like with the gaming commission, like just to get the access keys to be able to change anything on a slot machine, there are so many systems and checks and different people involved that it, it's it would be impossible for just one person to do something like that. So I, I really don't think it's anything that uh that we would need to worry about, but that's uh, another reason why they have so many webs of people that are involved in stuff like this, but very good question on that. Um, and Roger says, uh, I find everything you gentlemen have to say, uh, very, very valuable. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for that. We really do appreciate it. Uh, thank we you, absolutely right. love educating you guys and, and trying to answer as many questions as we possibly can. And we got a great live stream, uh, great live stream going around 719 people in here. Uh, in here watching right now on both Facebook and YouTube. And if you are watching on Facebook, be sure to go subscribe on YouTube. Because um, one thing about Facebook is we do not post full videos on Facebook. All of the full videos and full episodes are on YouTube. So if you're watching this on Facebook, but you want to learn more, make sure to go to YouTube because that's where the full library is. And uh, it's always free to subscribe over there. All right, let's see. 
Lucky Jewel slots. I could always try Double Diamond Deluxe, Pinball Top Dollar in the high limit area. They have treated us well. Yep, over at there at the Nugget, uh, they have some great machines there in their in their high limit room. Uh, let's say we uh, you want to tackle one together, Mark. That's that's good. All right. Thoughts on every acquiring AG, uh, IGT. About said AGS for some reason. IGT. <laughs> Uh, would you expect them to keep the IGT name cabinets, et cetera? Can we see pinball top dollar in every cabinet? So um, I'll go first on this one. So first of all, they are keeping the IGT name. Um, it is going to be a sub company. So they're not like, it's not like the whole thing is merging together because every is actually pretty big. A lot of people don't realize this. They're bigger than slots. Uh, actually, their every's biggest division is actually in ATMs and kiosks. So every is essentially, you know, they've, purchased the igt gaming gaming portion they're going to keep it as it's sub uh, sub brand uh so to speak i think it's going to be great I, we're not going to see any changes from igt games at least not anytime soon um so all of the names the cabinets the games they're going to stick around um and as for pinball and top dollar they're probably not going to go into an every cabinet they're going to stick exactly right where they are but i think it's a good thing um you know mark what uh, what do you want to add on add on to that same thing. I think what I'm most excited about is that every was the other company that was behind the steppers or the like physical reels. Um, they're called steppers. That's um, so it's good to see two companies that believe in that platform come together because that's just going to strengthen the future titles that come out. Um, where a lot of the other like Ainsworth doesn't have any physical reels. And they said they never would. <laughs> yeah. And so it's it's nice to still see some companies around that will keep that tradition alive. And so we'll be able to see the classics. I mean, most every cabinets are those physical reels, like the Crystal, Crystal Star, all those. I mean, those are all every. So um, I'm excited to see what they're going to come out with. We're going to see a lot of nine yeah. line games, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we are going to see a lot of those. are doing those now. We're going to see so, a lot of those. Yeah. All right, Mark, you want to you want to grab one? Sure. Um, Deborah Davis says, is the RNG set on volatility for that specific slot machine? Uh, no, RNG, those are two separate things. So the random number generator is what is predicting whenever you hit this, well, not predicting, but whenever you hit the spin button, the RNG is determining, that's the right word, determining what is going to be shown on that next spin. Uh, volatility is built into the game design itself. Okay, so you have games that are low risk, low pay, and high risk, high reward. That is what volatility is. It's just, volatility is just a fancy word that they <laughs> use to confuse everybody. But it's really about how much risk you want to put into a slot machine. And this is this is why Brantley and I hit this so hard because everybody's clouded their judgment with payback percentages and all this other stuff when volatility is one of the very few things that you actually have control over when you walk into a casino to pick a slot machine. And it's really up to you what you're looking to do you're looking to bankroll build, you stay away from high volatility, high risk, high reward machines. You go from the other side where you're giving up those big progressives and big bonus rounds, but to be able to play longer and to slowly build your bankroll up, then you can go push your luck on those high volatility games, you know? And so out of all the things that we teach about, I mean, budget's always going to be number one in my book, but volatility mm -hmm. is the second thing. And so Absolutely. focus focus heavy on that forget about the rng forget about payback percentages and return to player stats and all that kind of stuff focus on the volatility that's that's what you have control over um, very well said mark and thomas javier says hello do slot machines have a built-in program that will limit the amount any one spin could potentially be worth uh no but yes let, let me <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of a loaded question, but I'll be real quick about it. So there is a game pay table, which you can see, like it's on the glass, you know, you get three bars, it's 20 credits, you get two cherries, it's 15 or 10 credits, whatever the case is. Uh, those things are all controlled and built into the game design. Okay. Um, it's not the wild west where if it's three cherries, it might pay you 674 credits. Like it can't be that way. It's very fixed. Like the formula is fixed as to what symbols transpire to what payback, you know, how many credits you're going to get awarded. So um, I'm just reading your question again, but it's not limiting in the way where 
casino, and I want to make sure this is clear, that casinos can say, we need to limit this machine to only play, pay out a certain amount today. That's not possible. Um, that's certainly not possible. They don't have any kind of control like that. But it's all built into the game about how much what equates to how many credits, you know, what you see, what you get, that kind of thing. So hopefully I, that was the question that you were going for. Um, it's a lo it's a loaded question. It <laughs> it's is. A good I, question. I read it and I was like, oh, yes, for sure. And then I was like, oh. <laughs> it's That's a, it's a, good, a loaded one, but it was a good it one. Is. It is. And uh, Charles asks, how much do you know about Indian casinos? There's no difference between an Indian casino, a tribal casino, and a regular casino. There's no difference, guys. Uh, tribal casinos, actually, the only difference in terms of regulation is that tribal gaming is actually more regulated. They have more guidelines that they have to follow. It's harder to get a gaming license for tribal than it is non-tribal. Um, there's more oversight with tribal than there is non-tribal. Um and a lot of these smaller casinos out there, especially smaller tribal casinos, sometimes you have better luck there. It, I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've gone to smaller casinos that are tribal casinos and, you know, it's the staff is more friendly. You seem to have better luck, stuff like that. So there's nothing, nothing negative about tribal gaming whatsoever. I think it's, it's a really misunderstood by a lot of people. A lot of people think, Oh, a tribal casino can do anything that they want to. And that's not the case. It's, it's way so more regulated, regulated way yeah. more regulated um and then we do have a super chat here from dog 499 thank you very much for that is the house edge on kino the same whether it's uh paper or video does playing higher denom and kino usually have higher payback percentage like other slots so again with uh how payback percentage works on Kino is going to be similar to how payback percentage works on a digital table game because you've only got so many balls that you can pull. It's not going to pull duplicates or anything like that. Um, what each, you know, what each pays is what's going to be the control aspect of Kino. Kino is not a game that I would recommend. It's really not. Um, there's always going to be a house edge on any game. There's just, you know, there's a house edge on Kino just like there is a house edge on slots, paper, video, whatever the case may be. Um, playing higher Denom Kino, um, it might be the pay tables might be different, but it's not going to affect how the balls come out or anything like that um, in terms of how the actual Kino program works. So I, I hope that helps to answer your question. But, uh, but yeah, Kino is just not one that I would recommend at all. Uh, some people love it. Hey, there's a lot of people out there that love Kino, but not not a fan of Kino whatsoever. I'd like to do the paper one where you just sit down and do nothing for a little while while the numbers are called. I'd do that, but we do have a slot machine. Yeah, it's just boring to me. We do have a we we do have in Wyoming. We have a Kino lottery, which is actually kind of fun. Oh, it's a lottery. It's a lottery version of Kino, uh, where you have a lottery ticket and you pick your Kino numbers. That one's kind of fun. Uh, but no, Cas Casino Kino, not a fan of. Not a fan of. All right, Mark, I'll let you go ahead and grab your... Yeah, I'll take this one, one here. So Lucky uh, has a very good eye here. So are you more of a Statler or a Waldorf uh, behind you on the shelf? So that's these little guys here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, whichever the grouchier one is, is probably me. Uh, so this is this signifies Dave and I, because uh, somebody made a comment a long time ago that we sound like these two grumpy guys. And so we... <laughs> So we uh we had those uh sitting up on the shelf there. So good good eye there. Very good eye. And uh just really, really quick, since we do have a lot of you in here. Uh oh, where did it go? There we go. There you are, Mark. Uh That's really right. quick. Um, <laughs> like, like Mark's just, done. <laughs> I just got rid of Mark for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, since we do have a lot of you guys in here, I just want to touch on this once again because this is really prevalent, especially on Facebook and TikTok. Um, guys, we are not, we do not give away anything in the comments, nor do we endorse any kind of social casinos or anything like that. Um, there's been a massive problem. It's not just, it's not just with us, but it's with a ton of other creators. Um, you've got all these scam casinos and scam people out there that are essentially what they're doing is they're taking content, they're making a duplicate page, and then they're putting ads for social casinos on there. Um, or saying, you know, click this link to get, you know, free play at super lucky, good time, happy, you know, crypto world. That is not <laughs> us. That is not us. So just putting this out there, stay alert to stuff like that. Don't fall for stuff like that. We're not going to comment, um, you know, comment, uh, you know, hey, you've won a prize. We don't do that. We're not going to have you reach out to us on, you know, um, 
whatever that telegram thing is anything Instagram, like that so just be mindful that, yeah, telegram, and if you yeah. yeah if you see any fake pages out there um that are emulating uh that are emulating or, or stealing content or whatever just report it uh but please don't ever fall for it I, I can't tell you how many messages i get from people that are like oh i saw your video and signed up for whatever whatever social casino it's like that's not us i'm sorry to tell mm. you guys but that that is not us so i'm telling you right now we don't endorse anything like that we're not giving anything away so stay alert to stuff like that um also as a reminder once again we are now on uh well i'm on cameo now so uh if you're not familiar with what cameo is uh it's basically where you can actually uh you can go on and you can request a personalized video. So maybe a friend is having a birthday or something and you want me to do a video for them. Uh, we can do that. Uh, it's on cameo. Um, so you can look us up on there. We also do have, um, uh, it's in our shop page as well on uh, rope, the uh, new member benefit has already started. I know we have a ton of new members in here now, a ton of gifted memberships. So that's awesome. Uh, as a reminder, member Monday is always tomorrow. It's on Mondays every day at, or every, every day. Now that would, that'd be a lot. No, every Monday, <laughs> every Monday at 7 PM central time, uh, members do get a bonus live stream and we knew, uh, now have behind the scenes shorts that are only available to members. Uh, so if you've received one of those gifted memberships, be sure to check that out and join us tomorrow. Uh, if you're not a member and you would like to become one, it is totally optional. Uh, there's no additional education content over there whatsoever. So all of the education content is always available to everybody. We don't put anything behind a paywall, but if you would like to become a supporting member, uh, that link is in the video description down below. And we'll close out the show one more time with a very special thank you to our sponsor, Slot Machines Unlimited, which is once again, the nation's largest dealer of personal slot machines. So if you want to buy a slot machine for your house, this is definitely the place to go. They have thousands of titles and you can get a discount by mentioning Cowboy Slots. We have all of their information on our website, which is ropethejackpot.com. So maybe you're looking for pinball, top dollar, maybe an Ainsworth game. They have them all at Slot Machines Unlimited. Uh, they do offer shipping and technical support, so you don't have to be technically inclined. And remember, mention Cowboy Slots and you save on your order. And all of their information is available there at our website, which is ropethejackpot.com. Uh, with that being said, uh, we're going to go ahead and we are going to conclude our show tonight. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Really do appreciate having each and every one of you here on this Easter Sunday. Our next uh, live stream is going to be episode number 11. That's going to be next Sunday. And of course, Member Monday is tomorrow. So be sure to tune in to Member Monday. And if you have not yet subscribed to the Gamble Smart channel, which is Mark's channel, be sure to go over and subscribe. He's got a lot of excellent tips that he gives out every single day. Some great videos over there and also a wonderful community over there as well. So and be sure to check Brantley out. Brantley is on our yes. lives too. So yes. And I am also on their live stream. So I That's will be right. Mark's guest on Wednesdays. We have a lot of fun. Um, yeah, on Wednesdays, I will be Mark's guest. So uh, be sure to, uh, you can catch us uh, catch us both over there as well. Uh, as always, guys, thank you so much for joining us and tuning in tonight. Really do appreciate each and every one of you. As always, best of luck, stay safe, and we will see you again next episode. Take care, guys. Bye, guys. Have a great week.